I got the idea for Vampire Drag Queen at the gym, in the shower, and, and I don't know, I just got this idea in my head, and I guess it comes from the fact that two of the most popular things are drag queens and vampires, so why not put the two together? I wrote the lyrics mostly while doing laundry at the laundromat, and they came pretty quickly to me. Um, the melody, though, was trickier. You know, I wrote the music afterward. I was having a hard time just finding finding it, and uh, and then you know I think it wasn't probably until I found the right beat for it that the song started to come together, both melody and the sound. I mean, I wasn't sure it was going to come together well um, until I found the beat that you hear in it, and uh, and then all of a sudden it just completely gelled. It was really funny, you know. It was a mess, and then it was like it felt hot. And then I had the song Mastered by Matt Rocker, who I've never even met, but I found him online through a friend's suggestion, and uh, I was pleased with the work he did. And so then I put the song up on CD Baby, which then put the song on iTunes and Amazon.com and, and various places, so I could hopefully uh, you know, make some money off my song. The ideas for the video came from listening to the song over and over and over again while on my way to work and home from work on the subway. I would just put the song on repeat and just listen to it over and over and over again and visualize what I felt that the song meant to me and what imagery I thought was important. And these just ideas came into my head. Of course, much of what you see in the actual video comes from the realities of filming the video and putting everything together. I mean, you can visualize to your heart's content, but when budget and logistics come together, then you end up with the actual, you know, what it's actually going to be. And you know, a lot of things you discover in the moment that are even better than your ideas, and sometimes you're just making it work, and that's the magic of filmmaking. The uh, whole video probably cost about $650 total to, uh, to put together. And it's everything from costumes to props, Jared R. Pike design the costumes. Um, here are his renderings. And, you know, then it was the process of, you know, patterning these, these three dresses and buying the fabrics that, that would work for these three dresses. And then, of course, buying jewelry and wigs and, and vampire teeth and shoes and makeup and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of hand sewing with these costumes because the machine would not work on that fake leather there. And, and it just was hours and hours and hours of hand sewing, you know, throwing on seasons of Will and Grace and just sort of listening to the shows, laughing while, you know, doing a bunch of sewing. I think I watched lots of movies while doing the hand sewing. Um, anytime I could, we could use the sewing machine was it was a blessing so finding the location was pretty tricky I had set my hopes on a certain bar in New York but unfortunately that didn't work out and I was trying to find either another bar I could use you know just like hopefully not a lot for a lot of money you know rent the space film the video crank it out in the night uh, other ideas that came about were well maybe there's some some really cool hotel rooms in New York. That would be kind of a fun um, a place to film. And there were a couple places in New York that I thought would be the right look and, and really look hot. You know, just look like something befitting of a vampire drag queen. Unfortunately, I was afraid that it would cost just way too much to get a... even just for one night in a hotel room would be a lot of money. And Kurma, who was one of the dancers there, he was like, why not look at my spa? and see if this would work. So I came and looked at it, and I shot some footage, and, you know, I got a sense of, yeah, we could do this part here, and this part here, and this could work here, and, 
And all these ideas came together, and it was free! It was incredible that his boss let us do that there. Um, so that was a big, huge relief for me. So then came time to think about choreography for this, this piece, and I basically, I tried to think about basic, simple movement for this, because I knew I had to teach um, a lot of people, and I didn't have time to get together with them to teach them. Uh, so I taught them online, and I made this tutorial, and I had these simple movements that I thought were kind of fun for a vampire, kind of fun for a drag queen. Another thing I was really concerned about were, were uh, testing out how, how the video would be lit, and so I set up some lights in my hallway to sort of play with, you know, what are some combinations of gels and strobe lights and, and other lights that might we might use in the video to help create looks, to give uh, the video it's it's sense of style um, and that was a good thing to do because I learned a lot about what I thought would look good in the room because I didn't want to spend a lot of time in the room having to figure these things out I wanted to I knew we had a, a, a short amount of time comparatively and we needed to get to it I had lots of lists to be very organized I, I knew what the various shots were likely to be things I wanted that was all broken down as you can see on this list of shots uh, the different setups that I wanted. Uh, we didn't get to all of them, but we got to the important ones. We came up with some on, some on the spot that were not even thought of before, because that's what you do, you know? You use what's there, what's right. There's also a list, of course, of everything I needed to bring with me, and let me tell you, it was quite a list. It was a lot to haul. Thankfully, I had help, and we we actually hauled it on the subway, because I, I just thought, i got to save money. I'm spending too much money here. And we can get it on the subway, and we did. Um, fortunately, I felt smart enough to uh, take a cab home afterward because I was exhausted. Now, the one thing I knew I wanted for the video was some kind of really hot model type guy to be, you know, toyed with by Vampire Drag Queen. Unfortunately, the only person that I knew who had that kind of a body was my brother, and there was no way I was going to be you know, petting and fawning over my brother. I put an ad on Craigslist. It's like, I, I'm looking for this. Um, it's for YouTube. Uh, it is pain. Uh, send me your headshot, and let's talk. And this guy, Paul Masso, I think that's how you say his name, he was really sweet when he came in. He was very helpful, very supportive, and that was such a relief because the whole evening was just so overwhelming with so many details and things to get around, and I'm in, like, full drag trying to film myself, um, I, I just couldn't possibly, uh, have dealt with anything more than what I was handed, and, you know, so his being the stranger and showing up and being terrific was quite a relief. He was great to work with, very respectful, um, very lovely. <laughs> but basically, you know, this was a video of, of my friends coming together, as they have been doing on these projects. Let's make a project. Let's make some art together. Let's do it. Let's create our own work. And they came together and, and gave their all. And that is just something I really cherish. And I think in New York City it's harder to do that than in other cities because I think in New York everyone's doing their thing. Schedules are pretty rough. Mark Eugene Garcia was there to help support me and ended up directing the video. I mean, I had concepts, but he directed it. I mean, he's the one that made it work. He's the one that that got things to come together and and save the day. Because I realized there was no way I could direct it while I was in full drag and in almost every shot. I mean, I was in every shot. Um, and it just it wasn't going to happen. I had to have someone be the director. And he took in. And then Rodrigo Bolaños, you know, he... he jumped in and, and, and was assisting Mark and, and doing the playback and and just it was really a, an example of, of friends coming together to really really save the day and, and 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 come through for me to make this work um cause even as simple as this video was it was a lot it was a lot the street scene the fun thing about the street scene is we realized this was the same alley uh, that Carrie Bradshaw's Manolo Blahniks were mugged from her in Sex in the City. So that was kind of fun. And uh, we're out there at night shooting this scene, 
and there are people walking by and cars driving by and it was just really funny because you know, it was a very New York thing, just to, you know, shoot a quick, quick music video and, and, uh, and in full drag, why not? In fact, the funny thing is, I think there was a, there was a, there was a taxi cab that kind of, kind of pulled up and was all, like, checking me out and, and, like, not wanting me to get in his cab for a, for a fare. I mean, like, I think he was looking for some fun and I was just like, move on, move on. I was just sort of, oh, it was very funny. But we did shoot some scenes on the, on the street there. It's a cobblestone street, which was very hard to walk in, in those heels. And it was some footage that, had we had more time, that was at a point when we were running out of time and everyone's like, hey, John, you gotta get back upstairs and we gotta finish these final shots. Um, could have been some really cool footage. As you see, we started to get onto it and then it just, it didn't come together. I mean, the hat, hat kept falling off. In fact, I was supposed to wear the hat during the scene with the conservatives. It fell off. Like, I literally turned the corner to do the shot, and it fell off, and, and so, well, thankfully, there's not an edit problem with the hat, uh, but the hat was supposed to be there, and it wasn't. It just would not stay on my head. The editing for Vampire Drag Queen happened surprisingly fast. I had all this footage I thought it was going to take forever to put together, and it just happens. And you just make choices, you know? You, you go through the footage, you know, this is hot, this works, this moment should be used, and you take your notes, and you do your best to stay organized, and um, things just came together. It just became so simple. The video has done, I mean, it hasn't been hugely viral, you know, it's appearing to hit 20,000 views on its one-year anniversary, and I'm pleased with that, you know, I'm not, not that big on YouTube, so for me, that's a lot of views. Um, for other people, that's one day. Uh, and that's fine. I mean, I have a feeling this is one of those videos that every Halloween will will pick up more views and throughout the year and hopefully become a cult classic. I would be thrilled if this became like a Halloween classic and people, you know, had to go buy the song on iTunes to have at their Halloween parties. I would die. I would love it if drag queens were performing it in clubs at Halloween time. I, I mean, I would be honored. I think it's, I love the song. I'm proud of it. I think it's fun. I think it's exactly what I wanted to accomplish. And, you know, I was very thrilled when Queer T, Balerico, they both posted it on their blogs. Uh, you know, apparently people sent it to people at True Blood, and they thought it was funny. I mean, I don't know if the cast saw it, but people, I guess, who work on True Blood saw it. Um, apparently a friend of mine sent it to uh, the, the terrific actress who plays Elvira, and uh, I, I have no idea if she ever responded or not, if she liked it or not. But it's just fun to think that it's, it's getting around the world online. It's been seen in every country in the world, I believe, that has internet that wouldn't block it, I mean to say. Um, I think it has. Uh, and it's, it's something that I'm proud of, you know. It, no, it's not a fancy Lady Gaga video. If I had that kind of money and, and such, then yes, it could have been that kind of a video. But for what it is, shot for $650, I'm really proud of it. I think it's quite terrific. It's shot on a $200 camera. You know, it's got clip lights for lighting. I think we did some amazing art for very little money, very low budget. And I think that's the thing people have to remember is that the creativity is what's more important than the budget, ultimately. Because people are doing really cool things for small budgets. Um, obviously, at a certain point, the budget's a factor because you want to play ball with other people who have those budgets or, you know, wanting to compete or just wanting to have the, the right aesthetic so that people take your work seriously. And I think that with some of the criticism that has been made about this video, I take it as a compliment because it's saying to me that this video was on a higher level than they realized as far as what, you know, they, it came off more professional than what it was, at a more professional level than what it was, therefore worthy of certain criticism, as opposed to a video that, you know, is very obviously just sort of thrown together in someone's um, living room, you know, that's not going to get the same criticism because people get it, that it's just some cheap video that someone put together. And so, you know, I have a way of seeing that silver lining, I guess. Vampire drag queen The fiercest bitch to hit the scene This hot mess will make you cry